And then um, here, I wanted to go over the factors that, um, something happening like this. Um, the factors that influence conformity and obedience. And so um, when there, all of these different factors do, so group size, people are more likely to conform in groups of three to five. Um, and then also unanimity, which is when, um, when opinions of the group are unanimous, there is a higher chance of um, conformity and obedience. So like when everyone is saying that same answer, there is a higher chance that the other people will also put that same answer. And then in the ASH experiment, right, um, one supporter answered correctly before the experimenter and full compliance of participants dropped to 5%. So like, because it was a room full of all supporters, once that one person actually, once that one person before the um, actual like experimental subject answered that right answer and it was different from the previous people before, um, that experimental subject was able to you know, choose the right answer instead of conforming with everyone else's um, answer choices. And then, so group status also influences conformity. So, you know, when you're in a school or high school, a lot of children look up to the popular group and they kind of listen to that, that popular group that has a higher group status in a sense. And then group cohesion is when you feel a connection with the group then you would probably more likely conform with that group. And then observed behavior. So whether, when people believe that their behavior is observed, they tend to like try to, they try to be on their best behavior as possible. And then they usually tend to, you know, listen to authority. So with obedience. And then there's also public response which is when you know some behaviors are returned with acceptance and others are sh returned with shunning and that's why people tend to conform and, obe and be obedient to like the certain rules that a, a society may enforce and then also physical proximity so when um, people are closer in physical distance they actually are more likely to conform as well so that was interesting and then also I wanted to go into group interactions. So um, a common thing that they like to test are these, these terms here. So bystander effect is when an individual may feel less inclined to take action because of the presence of others in a group. So the reason for this is the diffusion of responsibility. So because individuals are surrounded by others when help is needed, they feel less personal responsibility and are less likely to take action when needed. Um, so the biggest example that um, they like to refer to in psych social is Katie Genovese, who is a 28-year-old woman living in NYC, New York City who was stabbed, raped, and robbed while 38 people were in vicinity. So because all of these people were there watching her, they, they felt that diffusion or responsibility, they didn't feel as responsible for reporting everything that was happening to her. However, like if there were less people or there was only one or two people that might have been witnessing that, there is a higher chance that that individual would take action. Um, okay, and then the next term is social, social facilitation, which is when the most dominant response for a behavior is shown. So um, this is like when you're practicing playing an instrument. If you are constantly practicing um, and you make a mistake in this particular part of the piece, social facilitation is when like you're performing in front of a group and that, that public audience kind of heightens your, your awareness to all these people that are watching you. And this causes that more dominant response or something that you are more likely to have done with your practice to be exhibited in that performance. So if you do constantly make a mistake in this particular portion because of your nerves, in a sense, you will also make that particular um, 
error in your performance unless you had changed that earlier on in your practice sessions. And then social loafing is a tendency to put less effort in group tasks if the individual contribution is not evaluated. So, you know, when you're doing group projects and the professor just grades the group as a whole, it doesn't quite give as much responsibility to each individual person. And then the other group members feel like they should just put less effort. And then the Hawthorne effect finally is a type of reactivity when individuals modify or improve their behavior in response to awareness of being observed. So usually, so that's kind of what I was referring to in the previous slide um, on just knowing that people are watching you. Usually people try to be on their best behavior when they know that that's happening. Um, and then also, in a group, when you're problem solving or making decisions, you know, these are common terms as well that they like to test a lot. Group polarization. So when other people in your group um, have the same opinions and you add another person in there who has that same opinion, it will cause, um, and they're able to discuss, it will cause their opinions to be even more more polarized, more, more to that specific area um, that they're believing in. So like an example I gave here was training cat with treats versus a collar. If all of the people in the group believe that they should train a cat with treats, um, then as more people who have the same opinion discuss with them, they will feel more, even more likely that they should train cats with treats instead of collars. And then group think is when you're maintaining harmony among group members um, and people feel that that harmony is more important than careful, carefully analyzing the problem at hand. And so usually in, you know, these cohesive groups who, that have uh, respected leaders, usually the other people try to suppress their own opinions just to maintain that harmony. Um, so an example here, if a leader says to put down a mischievous cat for protecting the neighborhood, um, these the members of this group would not argue um, and just agree to put down the cat according to this groupthink idea. Um, and solutions to groupthink tends to be to bring in like outsiders, also not letting the actual leaders share their opinions. So you know the group is not aware of that that higher positioned person's opinion. And then also having smaller groups because when you have smaller groups, usually people are able to go over all of these and feel more comfortable sharing their actual opinions. 